Welcome, everybody. On behalf of Management Consulted and Altman Salon, we're so excited that you've chosen to join us today. We're excited to hear directly from the firm about who they are, why they're a rising star in the strategy consulting space, uh, and more about the open roles that they have available in our hiring for right now. Before we get there, just a couple of housekeeping items for our MC community. Uh, Jay Fifth, my colleague who's on the call with us, is going to be popping some links in the chat. Uh, the team from Altman Salon is going to be joining us next Friday for a case prep session as well. So if you like what you hear today, if you're more interested uh, in joining the firm, you're going to want to join us next week to learn about the interview process, uh, more about the recruiting process, and what it's going to take to navigate the interviews at the firm. So that's happening next Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. The link to register for that is in the chat. It's completely free to you. Uh, and so go ahead and register for that. You're going to want to join if you're serious about breaking into consulting either with this firm or any other firm. Uh, and again, as I've already mentioned, uh, Altman is hiring for three open roles, consultant, senior consultant, and manager across their U.S. offices. I know you're going to hear more about that uh, as we go on throughout today. Uh, but if you at any point just can't wait and you're like, you know what, this is the firm for me, this is a role that I'm excited about, uh, the link to apply will be in the chat bar. Uh, and so all three job descriptions are on the same page. Read them carefully and make sure you apply for the one that best uh, fits where you're at in your career. We will be sending top resumes directly to the firm. Uh, so make sure that you submit your resume uh, today. Uh, and then a couple other pieces of housekeeping. Uh, Black Belt is backed by popular demand. So a lot of you who are a part of our community know Black Belt is our premier case prep program. We're running a June cohort right now. Demand was so strong that we, for the first time ever, opened up a July cohort. Uh, and this gives you eight hours of one-on-one -on -one interview prep sessions, resume and cover letter edits, and then access to our entire digital curriculum to ensure that you're prepared for the consulting interview process at over 170 different firms. Uh, what else is happening in July? If you're a black belt, you get access to two live group trainings where we'll be doing a deep dive into networking and fit interviews, as well as a deep dive into case frameworks and math. Uh, and so if you are gonna be interviewing or recruiting this cycle for consulting, join black belt. Uh, there's 18 spots left, the link is in the chat. And then the last thing I'll mention is on Sunday, June 27th, we are holding a Frameworks Intensive. Uh, and so if you are already in the midst of your case prep process and you know that frameworks are something you need to improve upon, you're looking to move from just memorizing rote frameworks to developing your own inside of a case, join the intensive. It's a three hour interactive, fun, fast paced, deep dive into all things frameworks. Again, the link to join is in the chat. Uh, and if you're a black belt, you get complimentary access to that. So if you have any other questions about any of these things, uh, we'll pop our email address into the chat bar as well uh, so you can follow up with us. But I don't want to take any more of our guest time today. I know you didn't join us to hear from me. You joined us to hear from the firm. So I'm going to turn it over uh, to Rory, Patrick, Toby, and Christina to take it from here. Perfect. Thanks so much, uh, Naman, for having us. I'm popping up a share quickly now, and then we should be uh, ready to get going. Sounds good. So uh, thanks again for having us. My name is Toby. Um, I'm joined here on my right by a combination of Rory Altman, our, our managing partner, and uh, Patrick Redman, another partner at the firm, as well as Christina Kilgariff, who's in our New York offices today. Um, we have about uh, 45 or so minutes with you guys to spend. We're going to do a combination of talk you through a bit about the firm and what we think makes Altman Solon so special, um, talk through some of the sample projects that we typically work on, uh, talk through some of the typical career trajectories that folks have at the firm, and then make sure to leave some time at the end for questions. So that's sort of uh, how we're thinking about it. To Naman's point earlier um, about some of those open roles, right now we are recruiting uh, in the United States for three open roles. There's the consultant position, which is typically about two to four years of experience after undergrad with no necessary experience specifically in consulting. Um, the senior consultant role, which tends to be something uh, that you join after having either an MBA or equivalent experience, and about maybe one or so year post MBA, as well as the manager role, um, which is typically uh, a post MBA role with about three years of experience as well. All of those job postings are available on the management consultant website, and we're looking forward to seeing um, a lot of those strong applications from you folks. Um, so I figure we might as well get into it um, with an introduction to the firm itself, and there's no better person to do that than our, our managing partner, Rory. Hi, my name's Rory Altman, and I'm delighted to be speaking with you today, and thank you, Toby and Patrick, 
uh, for arranging this. And Christina uh, Kilgariff is also on. Say hi, Christina. Good. So, hi, everyone. what I'd really like to do today is give you a flavor of the firm. And quite frankly, I'd like to share with you what I've learned and what I did not know when I first started looking at strategy consulting firms myself. I you know, was at the time uh, a student in business school. I knew of strategy consulting. I didn't really know much about the different firms and they all seemed kind of confusing for me. So um, hopefully I'll be able to describe the firm, give you a sense for our scope and scale and what we do. Hopefully I'll be able to also, if I, if I do my job right, give you a sense for where we fit within the management consulting field. That's really what I want to do because our firm is a little unique and we are looking for people who really, really dig what we do, specifically what we do, and who really find the type of work we do to align with their passion. So that's really our objective is to help you understand the entire playing field, where we fit, and if that's a good fit for you, then we think we'd like to talk with you. All right, so uh, just to come out for a second, um, uh, uh, Toby, we are a telecom, media, and tech sector focused strategy consulting firm. So what does that mean? Well, I think the words on the screen uh, say a lot of it. We focus on what transforms our world. And so if you think about the services, um, <clears throat> TMT, there we go. <coughs> Thanks. Only the cool stuff, right? <laughs> if you think about the services and the sectors of the economy that are changing the most quickly, the newest products and the fastest pace of new products coming out, the newest services, the services and products that you're probably talking about when you're hanging out with your friends, um, all the new media that's occurring, the new technology, the new consumer electronics devices, and all of the underlying infrastructure that makes all of that possible if those are things that you're finding to be a lot of fun, if you're interested in, if you follow them in your personal life, if you talk about them at, at, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends having dinner, then that's the kind of stuff we do every day. And so, yeah, it's only the cool stuff. Only the cool stuff. Yeah. All right. So this is, I think, what I hope will be, <coughs> excuse me, one of the most helpful slides that I can do to set the stage about where we fit. Let's focus on the left. There are so many types of consulting and uh, you know, there's strategy consulting. It's such a big term. I feel like we should define it, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So I, when, you know, and my parents ask me this all the time because they still don't know what I do. Uh, they say, well, <clears throat> you're a strategy consultant. So what, what is strategy? Strategy is for a business or organization deciding the scope of what it's going to do. What types of services, what segments, what geographies, what markets it's going to play in and how it's going to succeed and win in those markets. That is, that is business strategy. So we, we are a strategy consulting firm, but there are many other consulting firms that do really great work in the economy and are really important. The more generalist firms uh, that do a lot of different types of consultants, uh, consulting are sometimes called management consulting firms. There are other firms that focus on operations or information technology, IT. There are firms that focus on human resources consulting, firms that focus on process improvement, and quite frankly, a myriad of other functional experts like uh, consulting about how a finance organization should run or consulting about how a, uh, a process improvement um, organization should run. Well, um, all we do is strategy and I think that's the, most, that's the most important thing to know. So that's one dimension on the left. As you move towards the center, there's another dimension. What industries? We focus solely on three industries telecom, media, and tech, sometimes referred to as TMT. And uh, 
there are plenty of other industries that are super interesting, and some of them are very dynamic. There are things going on in the energy industry with solar, et cetera. Healthcare is trying to undergo a revolution in how it delivers care. Uh, retail, um, financial services, manufacturing, agriculture, you can go on and on and on, pharmaceuticals. The, there are lots of industries and they're all interesting. We focus solely on TMT. And I want to tell you why. Um, why those three sectors? Well, first of all, the pace of change in those three sectors is way ahead of the pace of change in most, not all, but most other sectors of the economy. The second reason is that these three sectors are really, really tightly intertwined. So telecom operators um, provide effectively the pipes, if you want to think about it that way, and media flows over that and it makes, and the technology makes the whole thing work together. So TMT are really tightly interconnected and we see that most companies that operate in one of those sectors is probably interacting a lot or maybe also active in the other sector. And so there's, for us, an intellectual synergy between those. And then if you take strategy consulting and TMT, you might say, well, what does that really mean? What does it mean tangibly? Well, we work on the types of areas that you see on the right side of the slide. So we do a lot of work with wireless operators, broadband operators. We do work with television studios and uh, distributors, uh, cloud, software, SaaS, IT services, so-called internet of things, uh, and the mobile device sector and the consumer electronics sector generally. So we spend a fair amount of time working on those areas. Let's do it. Let's do it. So what does that mean in terms of our impact? Well, uh, we'll talk about our size in a second, but I think this kind of captures a little bit about the impact. We work for uh, all three of the top US wireless operators. We work for probably four of the six largest private equity investors in telecom media and tech. We work for over 20 of the most well-known media brands a bunch of the top technology equipment manufacturers. And here's an interesting statistic. Over 90% of internet connections provided in the US are provided by our clients and we're involved in helping them operate and conceive of their broadband businesses. Our clients can be found in 75 countries. And in the US, for instance, we work for two of the top IT services companies. So I hope that gives you a sense for the scale and the impact we have on the, uh, on the sectors. So as a result of our merger with our longtime European partner, Solon Management Consulting, and our expansion into, uh, into Asia, we are now the largest global consultancy focused on telecom media and tech. We believe we have more people focused on TMT than maybe even some of the very large generalist firms within strategy. So if you are super interested in strategy consulting for TMT, we are effectively the big dog, Toby. That's the spot to be. That's spot the spot to be. be. All right. So what about the US? Where are we in the US? Well, right now we have offices in Boston, New York. We just opened LA and offices in San Francisco an office in San Francisco as well. Uh, but that's not, all. that's not all. That's not all. Okay. Here's where we are as of today. Uh, so we are also in London. Uh, we opened Mexico City last summer. We're also in Milan, Munich, Paris, Singapore, and Sydney. We're just open this year, and we've been in Warsaw for a very long time. So that just gives you a sense of the scope of the firm. And in fact, uh, the whole firm uh, is expanding and all of those offices are expanding. And every once in a while, I, I see a chat like, are you opening an office in Canada? Well, I'm Canadian. And unfortunately, no, we have no plans to open an office in Canada. It would be nice. Uh, we couldn't even visit, I can't even visit Canada without a two week quarantine right now. Um, so uh, uh, no, 
is Middle East and North Africa part of your expansion strategy? We are thinking about uh, about that uh, that geography. Uh, we have no immediate plans and nothing to announce uh, right now. Perfect. I figure now's a good time as any to get into some of the example projects that we do at the firm to give you folks a sense of what it's like and, and what we typically work on. Yeah, great. Hi, everybody. I'm Patrick Redmond, and i uh, really excited to be talking to you today. So we'll get into a, a peek into some actual project work uh, in a moment, but um, you know, as we as we get into that, um, you can expect to see that we take a highly analytical approach. Uh, this slide actually would be something that we would never show because there are no numbers on it. <laughs> um, and, and of course, as, as Roy was saying, uh, all these projects are about focusing on really um, the most impactful decisions uh, facing businesses today. So, all right, so uh, jumping in on some kind of uh, example uh, topics that we would delve into um, in our projects. And if, if someone is doing uh, eight to 12 projects a year or something on the order of that, you could expect actually to cover many, if not sort of all of these things over the course of sort of a year, two, three years. Um, I've personally been involved in projects uh, over the last few years that uh, probably have covered everything. Uh, one of the most uh, interesting projects I did uh, recently in the kind of strategy market insight space was, was looking at uh, net neutrality um, and what that meant for a, uh, an internet service provider. And really interesting to me because I uh, came away with a totally different appreciation of, of, that, of, uh, of that topic. I just finished a, product, a, a project developing a new um, uh, direct-to-consumer streaming service uh, offer that touched on a lot of things in that go-to-market column. A little bit of product development, uh, market strategy, very much looking at the the, uh, the customer experience. So, some examples of the the kinds of of uh, topics that that we cover. So, kind of getting now into um, actual project work, and, and we'll do a deep dive in a couple things in in, in a moment. But um, just four examples across our three industries, and then those sort of topic topic areas. You can see in the top left this uh, this project here for a tech firm. Um, thinking about their overall strategy and underscoring this point that we made, this stuff is very uh, tangible. It's products that we use. That pro uh, project was actually um, all about services like like Zoom. Uh, here we go, using <laughs> using Zoom right now. The the bottom left uh, um, project here uh, for a telecom firm. This is the kind of thing that we do when we can get our hands on really big, meaty data sets. Uh, and in this case, uh, collecting all the information that we could about um, their, uh, you know, the consumers' products, et cetera, et cetera, and um, and doing a whole series of regressions and very um, involved analysis on that to understand what are the sales drivers that that company can pull to uh, to generate the most revenue lift. Top right project, telecom again, go to market. This is a little bit more of a creative thing where. We saw uh, for this client um, a, a product that was uh, experiencing a slowdown, and then trying to like peek behind the curtain or into that black box and understand like what's what's causing that, and coming up with uh, creative ways to to do that, and then strategies for the company to to address that. Bottom right um, example of a due diligence kind of project we do, and we do do many of those. Um, in, in this case, um, we're looking at a, a video distribution investment. You know, so think of something like uh, like a, you know a service sort of like network Netflix that kind of thing. Um, and all I'll say about this is that everyone in that project team came away knowing more about that target and the you know the space it was operating probably than anybody else out there. You know, uh, looking under every uh, every little. Uh, Every uh, rock and every nook and cranny of the uh, company. So now to kind of drill into a couple actual uh, project examples. In this in this case, uh, working with a, a major cable company, um, uh, an MSO, if uh, if you will. That's that's uh, the the acronym for cable company. And I point that out because there are a lot of acronyms on this page, and there are a lot of acronyms in our industry. Don't be like. Uh, overwhelmed, you get the you, you figure them all out as you go. But um, in this case, looking at, at the um, uh, at a potential acquisition, as it were, 
Uh, and one of the key questions there was understanding cord cutting patterns. Now, if we were to open this up and do a poll and ask all of you, like, who here has pay TV? Um, probably you know, the answer would be very, very few. Um, the reality, though, however, is that uh, pay TV is not yet dead um, and uh, um, and uh, may not be, not you, um, and not me either. Um, uh, it's 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 not yet dead, despite the sort of idea that 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 it is. But but uh, the rate at which we are cutting the cord collectively is a really important question uh, for the you know the potential investor here. So uh, project covered a lot of ground, but some of the key things that it covered and delved into was around the uh, you know who's who's jumping to OTT platforms uh, over the top. That's what OTT acronym means, you probably all know that. RSNs, Regional Sports Network, who's, uh, who's using those? And uh, what do those mean to like uh, slow down, slowing down the, uh, the cord cutting? Long story short here, um, in, in, in this work, um, we uh, came about uh, sort of a conclusion around what ultimately will be a floor, we think, uh, given the current um, services that are available over the top a floor to the to uh, to cord cutting it's not going to go all the way to zero when people are uh, needing to go to pay tv to get their sports content it's going to be the 50 year olds that prop it up Patrick. <laughs> It'll be the 50, yeah now now i'll go 50 year olds it's not going to be me it's not <laughs> going to be me. Um, now just a little uh, plug for something that uh, i'm involved with here uh, this is a moving target because a lot of content is jumping over the wall um, if you will, and going direct to, to consumers like us. So something that uh, a colleague and I do every year is a, over the summer we do our own proprietary research to allow us to understand this better, where we look uh, at trends and you know see how you know, more content goes over. Well, what does that mean to um, to the the bigger picture for for cord cutting? Yeah. So the the last kind of little uh, you know mini mini deep dive will. Uh, We'll do here, um, and then move to the next topic. Um, so now, all right, fiber optic networks. This this might not be that thing that you have a conversation with your friends with over. over Rory dinner. does. I do. Rory, Rory does, does all the time. Rory <laughs> does. <laughs> Rory <laughs> might, uh, and others might too, uh, but but not necessarily all of us. Uh, the 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 truth, however, though, is that like fiber networks is the uh, the sort of a fuel, if you will, for all of the, or a lot of the, the growth and change that's happening in our industry, because it's allowing that media content to go direct to consumer. It's allowing us to have faster uh, mobile mobile phones, et cetera. So it's a really critical part of, of the, the infrastructure. And in this case, in this project, uh, we were working with one of these operators of uh, a fiber optic network. And um, by the way, there are lots of them out there. Uh, many, many with names you don't know, of, but they, they're all over the place. Looking at them to understand what are their growth uh, opportunities. And, um, you know, is that a, a matter of uh, getting into a different kind of infrastructure, a different geography, uh, expanding the customer segments that they serve, uh, introducing um, new new products? So um, we, you know, covered a, a whole a whole ton of a uh, ton of ground. Um, but through all of this, this is um, like the nuts and bolts of consulting, where we need to size a market and understand, you know, how big, how attractive is it? Uh, what are the risks that this company could be facing by going into you know, pursuing this growth option versus another? You know, understand the feasibility for them to do that. Like, would would if they were to uh, if they're a, a business services facing firm and they want to get into a consumer services facing firm, do they have the capabilities of even of even even being able to do that? So and this particular project, Patrick, this was done by uh, in Latin America. So in this case, there was the added uh, excitement of trying to figure out how an emer a set of emerging markets are going to evolve and how you know, what is the right time to invest in different markets within uh, South America. So that's that was the challenge here. It was to, it was to figure out the the growth trajectory for the company and to t to recommend to them where to grow. And that's exactly what we did. We recommended acquisitions. We recommended that they stay focused on the enterprise market and the wholesale market. 
and we recommended that they enter something called the small cell backhaul market, which is fiber optic, um, a fiber optic network connecting all of the little small cells that are placed in urban areas to allow mobile networks to deliver Netflix to you while you're sitting at the bus stop or in the park or the cafe or whatever it was. Yes, so um, we'll have dinner and you can tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, so I think that's a great example of at least some of the types of projects that we do. Um, it's also worth spending some time on, on our people. You, you've gotten a sense of each of our three personalities. You'll start to get a sense of Christina's personality in no time. Um, but we want to at least expose you to what, what's sort of the rest of the company like, uh, who, who makes us smile when we come into work each day, and what are the exciting things that we get up to. Um, so the first thing that I want to harp on is just how important our people are to the firm. Um, I, speaking from my own personal experience as an example, I moved up to Boston not actually knowing anyone, um, and I sort of rolled the dice on roommates and I rolled the dice on colleagues, and my colleagues immediately became some of my closest friends. Um, these are people that I still vacation with and look forward to seeing um, and can't wait to be back in person with them. Our, our colleagues and the people at our firm are truly, are truly awesome. It's, it's a one-of-a-kind community. It's a great place to work. Um, I was someone who always historically looked forward to coming into the office, to being seated in the bullpen, and knowing that there was always something going on, knowing that it's very easy to stand up and ask a question, um, and then you'll quickly make friends with a combination of your colleagues. You're excited when the summer interns come in. Um, you're excited when the winter interns come in. It's just a great place to spend time uh, with people that you enjoy working with. So to that point, exactly, what are some of those uh, fantastic opportunities and, and things that we do? So we like to say that we, have, we still have the passion of a startup, but the respect of an industry leader. So we are able to operate um, with that agility in terms of creating some events and programming that are really exciting for our staff. Um, but we also still command that market position when it comes to the excellent work we do. So just talking through some of the fun photos that we have up on the screen. Um, on the top left here, this was an event um, in Boston. I will caveat that all of these photos were pre-COVID, um, so they are dated, but we're looking forward to getting back to them uh, soon. So the top left was um, an event that was run by uh, WAS, the women at Altman Solon. Um, in our Boston office, um, on the first floor, there is Bespoke, which is sort of a soul cycle class. Um, uh, traditional spinning class. And so there was a Women at Altman Solon event where they were able to rent out the studio and do a, uh, a specific sort of TMT themed uh, ride there. On, on the bottom left, we have one of uh, my favorite events during the summer, um, which is our summer kickball league that we do with the interns. Um, I was disappointingly not in this picture. I was taking this picture. Um, so that's why you don't see me in it there. Um, but it's a great time to sort of wrap up your day on a Wednesday, um, meet the interns, spend some time, uh, usually losing in kickball, we were never very good, um, but we brought the heart, um, and then going out and grabbing a drink afterwards, maybe singing some karaoke, that kind of thing. And then on the bottom right-hand side, that's uh, one of my favorite events at the firm. Uh, that is a picture that I am in. I'm in the middle there. Um, that is one of our alternative happy hours. So our firm places an emphasis on making sure that people actually know each other outside of work. So uh, on Fridays, we normally have um, weekly happy hours where we'll go to a, a local um, restaurant uh, around the office and sort of relax, decompress from the week, meet each other's significant others, um, meet the people that we sort of care about in our lives. Um, and there are, there are occasions where we try to say, okay, let's get out and, and do something in addition to just spending some time at a happy hour. And those are known as alternative happy hours. And so this alternative happy hour was, um, I, I personally um, am, am an avid ice skater. I love to ice skate. And so I had contacted a local rink about trying to rent out the rink um, for a couple hours. And so we were able to rent out the rink that was um, during the winter of 2019, that picture. And it was just us having a great time, uh, sort of different levels of ability. Uniquely, one of the people who works at the firm, Erin, um, she is actually a part-time skating instructor um, and figure skating coach. So she was able to teach us a bunch about it. Um, and it just sort of speaks to all of those experiences that you have when you start to meet the people that you work with outside of a traditional office setting. The one thing I will also add, um, because I know it's near to Rory's heart, is the annual ski trip up there that we're really looking forward to getting back to. Um, so uh, traditionally, uh, in the sort of end of the ski season, the, the firm will go up to Stowe, Vermont um, for an annual ski trip, which is a great weekend of uh, time spent with your colleagues and family and loved ones, uh, time spent teaching each other how to ski, I had never skied before and someone had to teach me how. Um, it just tends to be a great time and an awesome way to decompress at the end of the winter. My kids are really, really sad that yeah. they missed it. And yeah. they, 
like the, they can't wait until. I, I'm very much looking forward to ski trip again. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I think of it as a two year pause. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> yeah. COVID hit about three days before our ski trip last year. It was extremely sad. It's tough. So uh, all of these points, though, are to make the, the sort of uh, underlying point that consulting, especially at Alden Solon, it is more than uh, just a job. It's also a career. And there are a lot of ways that um, we do as a firm to sort of build upon that and allow you to move through your career with interesting opportunities and things that excite you. All right, so I'll take over from here. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Christina. I'm in the New York office right now. Um, so we've talked a little bit about what we do on the strategy end. We've talked about our projects, our global reach. Toby's talked about the people, but what makes Altman Solon unique? Um, so I think what's important to take away from this slide, really at the core, is that we have a huge focus on mentorship and professional development. Um, we're big on running trainings for anti-bias, um, inclusive leadership, um, having leadership conversations. We have weekly MC chats where we hear about um, MCs outside of the workplace and how they got to where they are today. Um, we have support for our apprenticeship program to provide um, an opportunity for people to really learn as soon as they come on board, um, and, and a ton of other opportunities that I could go on and on about. Um, in addition, we really believe in a flat organization. So really hitting the ground running as soon as you come on board, contributing to project teams, debating, um, getting an opportunity to present at really junior levels, which I think is also very unique. Um, Toby touched on the social events piece, the very fun part of the office, um, our summer outings, the weekly happy hours. Um, what's nice about being strategy focused but we also have limited travel. Um, so you really have an opportunity to get to know your colleagues um, who you're working with regularly, eventually when everyone's back in the office space um, to have those opportunities to connect with the people working around you. Um, and then on the bottom left here, the flexibility piece. So we have a policy against weekend work, which is pretty amazing in terms of management consulting typical hours. So it's a really great opportunity that we focus on maintaining that work-life balance both inside and outside of the office. Okay, and then Toby, if we click down here, one of the other unique pieces about the firm is our affinity groups. So we have several groups that are started at the firm and we host events um, and different speaker series um, kind of across the board. So uh, the program is called DIVE, standing for Diversity, Inclusion, Visibility, and Equity. Um, and it's basically the umbrella organization for many different affinity groups below. Um, so on the left-hand side, Women at Altman Solon. Um, I'm personally a member and just signed on to be an office captain um, to help in a leadership role there. Um, we have an LGBTQ uh, plus group, um, a racial and ethnic diversity group, and a first-gen low income. Um, and on the next page, we talk a little bit about the programs um, that we've done, but just some examples to throw out there. For Women's History Month, um, we had a guest speaker come in, uh, Ty Randolph, who was the president and COO of Laughing Out Loud and did a great job presenting to the firm. Um, we have several trainings that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, we have an eliminating bias and a giving and receiving feedback training. Um, Black History Month was also a great opportunity for us to bring in some speaker series. Um, so we had programming related to systemic anti-Black racism in US history. Um, we had uh, a lecturer at Harvard Business School come talk to the firm as well. And then on the first gen low income side, um, we've really been focusing recruitment and targeting efforts um, to evaluate how do we reduce bias and, and compensate for differences in backgrounds. Um, as we recruit at the firm. Um, so really just a non-exhaustive list, but a series of, of really great opportunities that people at the firm are spearheading. And then talking a little bit about flexibility. Um, so again, the firm really focuses on maintaining that balance for work life. So that being said, there are several programs in place that are pretty unique to the firm. Um, in terms of uh, being a, a tenured consultant, 
or above, um, looking for a little bit more flexibility around either the work year, um, so taking a sabbatical or having a reduced work year um, to reduce the number of months that you're working. Um, in some cases, single staffing. Um, some of the examples outlined on the side would be a manager who, for personal reasons, needs to be staffed half time. Um, remote work flexibility. Um, we're moving towards a hybrid model as we move into the post COVID world. Um, and then extended parental leave. Uh, the firm is really generous in terms of time off um, for parental leave, which is pretty great. Okay. Anything else I missed here, guys? I think you covered it all. All right. Perfect. So it might be helpful to spend some time quickly talking through some of the frequent tasks that a lot of people do in their roles. Um, and we uniquely have um, some profiles that will pop up on screen to be able to walk through what are the typical day to days look like for someone in a consultant role, uh, in a senior consultant role, and in a manager role. Um, we'll probably spend a bit more time on the consultant one just because it typically uh, applies well. And I have a personal favorite of who we use for the consultant role. Um, and then uh, we who, can. Who could that be? Who could it who be? Could it be? <laughs> and then we'll, we'll flash up the uh, senior consultant and manager roles. Um, so, in terms of just the model <laughs> consultant that you can possibly have. Best possible ever. Best possible, best possible ever. ever. Um, so you'll see a uh, slightly less dyed hair version of uh, Toby, a, a tenured consultant, up on the screen there. Um, so my, I joined the firm about three years ago uh, with a background originally in engineering. I joined as an analyst and have been promoted through to the current role of consultant that I'm at. Um, and on the right hand side, you see here uh, what my typical day to day looks like. And so I want to hit on a couple points there. Uh, the first is that professional development PD uh, and project kickoff meeting that, that I'm seeing at around 10 to 12. And I will caveat this by saying this is not every day. This just tends to be sort of a sample of my day. Um, and so one of the things that we really try to do on our, on our projects is uh, kick the project off on a really strong footing in terms of what are my goals as Toby uh, for this project and what am I trying to get out of it? Is this the kind of thing where I really want to spend time in the weeds analytically? And I'm looking to really take a bite out of um, a real analytical challenge. Is it the kind of thing where I'm looking to uh, start mentoring some of the uh, analysts or the interns in the project and developing a bit more of a uh, process role? And really sort of explaining that to the project leadership so that everyone's on the same page about what everyone is trying to get out of the project. Uh, later in the day, I'll at least highlight that 2.30 to 4.45 spot. Um, the firm does a really good job, especially during COVID, I would say, of letting people have some agency in their schedule. And so I like to work out in sort of the middle of the day. Um, it's nice to know that the gym now and the Boston office is actually back open. Um, so it's really nice to have an organization that's supportive to letting you jump out to go, pick some heavy things up and, and put them back down. Um, and then you can see sort of the rest of the day as, as uh, follows. We can uh, quickly flash up Gray as a senior consultant, but we'll actually jump forward to uh, Alex, who's a manager at the firm, um, just to highlight some of the stuff that he does. Um, his day looks pretty similar to mine. Um, uh, he, he starts on the West Coast time. He's based out of our San Francisco office. Um, and a couple things to highlight here. He tries to get that run in about the same time that um, I'm lifting. He spends a lot of his day working with team members and, and going through some of the problems that, that we're facing on each of our individual projects. And so this includes a combination of um, the staff that we already have, but one of the things that we, we love about this uh, relationship we're building with, with Naman and the rest of that management consultant team is really trying to explain uh, how, how much the firm is growing and what role um, applicants have in that process and how much we're excited about the potential for people to join us. So when we think about uh, how people join the firm, it, it's typically um, at either sort of the consultant, the senior consultant or the manager level, um, as well as a, a large pipeline that comes out of our undergraduate schools for, for internships as well as analysts. In terms of how you grow, you can either uh, spend a lot of time at the firm doing excellent job, doing an excellent job, excuse me, learning uh, a, a really in-depth uh, strength when it comes to a content niche and being promoted through into a, a management and later a director or partner role. But there are also a lot of other paths that are exciting to, to folks at the firm in terms of other opportunities to go to some of the top MBAs. Um, two of my close friends from the firm are leaving uh, this fall, disappointingly so, to go to a combination of Stanford for one and uh, Wharton for the other. So placements at some of the best business schools. We've had a lot of colleagues leave for awesome positions in either private equity or venture capital um, or even some really cool internal strategy roles. So what does that look like if someone joins the firm and what are some of those typical paths? 
the answer, as is the answer a lot of times in consulting, is it depends, right? There's there's no standard answer, right? And so uh, for the for the folks who join as an analyst out of undergrad, um, they, they'll spend some time potentially getting promoted to consultant and later senior consultant, and then they might realize, okay, I want to go for an MBA. That's a path that's available to them. There are folks that join as a consultant and get promoted and, and try their hand in the startup space. Um, they might succeed, they might fail. The firm is always happy to have people back, um, especially when they've gained a bit more of that experience in terms of trying their hand at, at uh, ownership. Then there are, there are folks who will end up leaving for a job at either venture capital. We've had colleagues leave for a nationwide bike trip, um, take some time off. And then there are the people who realize very quickly, consulting is what I love. Rory among them, um, and going from sort of consultant all the way up through the ladder and progressing through their career. So at least the takeaway here is that there are a lot of different opportunities in terms of where you join the firm, uh, how you leverage that experience, and how you continue to grow at the firm. That at least wraps up the materials um, that we have right now. Um, we wanted to spend, I think we have about 15 minutes or so. Perfect. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, these questions come through in the chat, and so we're going to do our best to sort of circle back and address some of these. Uh, I will leave this up on, on the time, or on the screen for the time being. This is just a bit more color about some of the open positions. And then I'm gonna just quickly scroll through some of those uh, open questions from folks. So, ooh. Oh, oh, you might not. There we go. Okay. So scrolling back up to the top, and I'll uh, read these out for at least the sake of Rory and Patrick behind us. Um, Recording will be available at the end of the session. Um, does the firm have any internship positions for uh, uh, 2022? We do have a number of internship positions open, um, and uh, those are exciting. You can see a lot of those details on the Altman Salon website, www.altmansalon.com. Uh, for the purposes of this uh, conversation, we're mainly focusing on the open positions we have uh, right now being consultant, senior consultant, and manager. Um, but those internships as well as uh, full-time do We, we recruit for 2022 interns this fall. Yes. Generally, fall and into the winter. That's correct. Um, uh, talking about the TMT, the last T, technology, uh, coincides with the first T and the M. Uh, how does this product uh, slash business unit mix look at Altman Solon? Uh, that's a great question. We got our start in telecom, uh, but we're rapidly catching up in tech and media. I think telecom is probably just under 50% with the rest split between tech and media right now. Nice. Uh, a similar question in terms of what proportion of the work is in uh, commercial due diligence and uh, what are the types of projects that those typically are? Wow, good question. Um, so commercial due diligence varies between, call it 40 and 55% of our work. Um, at any given time by volume, it might be a little less, maybe 40 to 50% by volume. So uh, the commercial due diligence work, what was the second part of that? Um, and uh, what are some of those typical projects that we do? Oh man, well, commercial due diligence is usually helping a private yes. equity firm. <laughs> yes, helping a private equity firm decide whether or not to buy a company. And so it's basically a full commercial analysis of the company, market, competition, pricing, operations, talent base, etc. Awesome. I did a, a due diligence on a dial-up uh, internet service provider years and years ago, and the only question the investor wanted to know was the rate of decline. The rate, <laughs> fair, fair rate of decline, yep. Um, which tools and technologies do we need to know? The, the short answer to that is uh, very few. There's no sort of baseline in terms of you must have competency in X, Y, or Z to succeed at the firm. We're looking for people who are strong analytical thinkers, who can think creatively and have good communication skills. Um, at the end of the day, our interview process looks to try to sort of test out all the other skills that you can bring to the firm. Um, but there's certainly no uh, baseline requirement for, oh, you must be a uh, expert in SQL to be able to join the firm. Um, do we work on projects for uh, mobile virtual network operators, MVNOs in the Americas and or Europe? Yes, we do. We do. <laughs> Next question. Um, <laughs> what are some of the mechanisms that Altman Solon used uh, for this case? And, and that was, I think, in reference to one of the first examples um, of the deep dive projects we do. Primary research being survey and or secondary data. Um, I, I can answer this in terms of my own experience. I've, the answer is sort of all of the above. I've launched uh, a number of surveys with the company. I have uh, gone out and spoken to experts on the phone. I have. Uh, sort of run down all of the secondary research avenues. I've spoken to experts, Rory among them at this point, um, uh, around sort of certain industries. So I would say uh, the, the whole gamut. 
And we also have a huge knowledge base. One of the benefits of being focused on three tightly interconnected sectors is it's rare that we get a project where it's a complete blank slate, yeah. where we're starting from zero. And that's why clients, quite frankly, choose us because we're not starting from zero. So they don't have to pay to have us yeah. go from zero to hero. We're already hopefully on our way there. We're, we're halfway to hero no matter what. Um, is the Singapore office only focused on uh, Southeast Asian TMT? Yeah. So the, the Singapore office and the Sydney office, and bear in mind the Sydney office is, uh, is like two months old. But th those two offices together are both serving Asia, um, but they are also supporting European and US projects when the expertise in time zones makes sense. Um, do we hire for only in-person roles at local offices or do any of our employees work remotely? Yeah, we really feel like it's a benefit for people to be working together in person. I know that's kind of odd to say because we're just coming out of COVID land, yeah. but there is a huge benefit. So even though our offices haven't fully reopened yet, we are looking for people who will ultimately be in those offices and will be able to spend time working shoulder to shoulder with their colleagues in a safe environment, of course. Yeah, um, uh, there's a question around uh, international sponsors sponsorship for visas and international students. I can say right now we are unable to sponsor um, applicants in the United States offices specifically for visas, but I will caveat this and say that uh, we have a lot of those other international offices that Rory had mentioned. Um, and so if those are closer to home for you, I would certainly uh, say, take a look on the website and see if that's, that's what's right for you. Um, which role, uh, sorry, which role should a person apply to with overall two years of experience, but only one year of experience in consulting? Um, I, I think the consultant role sort of sounds appropriate for that. I, I can't think it hurts um, in general to, to apply for, for the consultant role regardless. Um, and then we will sort of take a look at the application and, and we'll follow up with, with applicants that we really believe can succeed at the firm. Um, for, those who, uh, for those of us on the call who are graduating with their MBA next May, what position would be most appropriate? So typically, uh, the entrance post MBA is at the senior consultant role. Um, the, this coming fall will be a combination of our recruiting for um, MBA sponsorships, sorry, MBA internships for next summer, as well as internships for next summer, as well as some of the uh, fresh out of undergrad analysts for what would be 2022. So that's set to come um, this coming fall. Um, if you graduated this May, can you still apply? 100%. Uh, I would say uh, certainly apply through um, the management consulted um, posting that Naman is going to share after this conversation. Um, but yeah, certainly do apply. During what uh, we answered the questions around analyst recruiting. Um, this is a good question for you, Roy. With a couple of mergers recently, what are the largest opportunities or challenges that Altman Solon is facing recently? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So. Uh, we're kind of on a tear, to be honest. We're busy, that's why we're talking to you and that's why we're interested in hiring people. I think our biggest challenge is to provide a great training foundation and apprenticeship foundation yeah. to all of the new people who are joining us and trying to integrate you into the office and into the, the flow of the work and get you to deliver alongside our existing staff and experienced staff, super high quality, super innovative, uh, ideas and recommendations to clients. So that's where we're focused most of our time. Yeah. Um, do you layer on data analytics functionalities like customer segmentation, churn modeling onto your TMT strategy projects? All the time, every day. That was the, the most recent project that I was on and just wrapped up was a all of those. It was churn modeling and mitigation, it was customer segmentation, um, and it was leveraging a combination of uh, predictive machine learning as well as neural nets. So checked all the boxes there. Um, how does the MBA return option work? Is there firm sponsorship? Uh, yeah, we have a pretty robust sponsorship program that is in line with what uh, some of the other firms uh, that you, you know are doing. So yes, we do. And we are delighted to support that. Um, perfect. Um, do we only hire MBA students? No, we do not. I do not have an MBA. I, I joined um, out of undergrad. Um, certainly do not consider an MBA as a requirement for an application. Uh, we're just looking for people with strong analytical capabilities and, and backgrounds um, that we think can really succeed. And interest in TMT is always helpful. It is. Um, it, it's, it's, it's better if it's a, an interest area or, or a passion. 
Yeah, do you recommend applying for two roles at the same time, consultant and senior consultant? Um, I would say try, try to sort of flip through the job posting on management consultant website to understand a bit more about which you think sort of suits what you'd like to do in your career and where your skills sort of line up. Um, I would dissuade you potentially for applying for both, um, but I would say certainly don't let it prevent you from applying for either. Yeah, I mean, I would try, like Toby said, to figure out where your experience lines up. We, we don't want to set somebody up for failure, uh, but anybody we interview, we're always thinking about whether we've got them uh, leveled right. Yeah. So if you, uh, you know, if, if you apply for consultant and we really think that you've got senior consultant experience, we're going to work with you on that and and vice versa. Perfect. Um, can you share a bit more about our uh, capital markets practice? Yeah, so the capital markets practice refers uh, uh, broadly to our work with any uh, any investor on any type of transaction. I'll tell you that about 75 to 80% of that work is for private equity, uh, with the balance being for uh, occasionally hedge funds who are investors in distressed companies often, but not always. Um, sometimes it's uh, uh, private investors, could be a SPAC or, or um, special purpose acquisition vehicle uh, or, or other type of financial players. So we refer to it as capital markets, but the motion is somewhat similar for many of those projects and clients. Yeah, are our data analytics teams in-house or are consultants expected, uh, functionally speaking, to have a mix of data and strategy skills? So we, uh, we have a separate analytics innovation team. And if that is really your calling and your passion, they are hiring as well, and we are, well, we are hiring, I don't mean to say they, we are hiring in that in that team. Um, do, do you need that, I think, yeah, to be a part of the regular consulting staff? We really need people who've got, um, maybe not all of the tools or any of the tools developed in analytics, but we need you to have a quantitative and analytical mindset. Yeah because you're gonna be working on a certain level of analysis in our model all the time. At some point, the analysis gets beyond what we can even expect the Tobys of the world to handle, and that's when we pull in the AI expert team to supplement. Disappointingly happens more frequently than I'd like. <laughs> um, uh, what's the recruitment process timeline look like for the London office, and are we also recruiting uh, internationally? Well, uh, yes. Uh, our European uh, teams are recruiting. Uh, I would say if you submit your resume through uh, whatever channels we're talking about here, we'll try and route it to the correct place. If not, I'd also say just take a look on Altman Salon, uh, the website.com. There are a couple postings there specifically for some of the jobs in either Mexico City, um, uh, Sydney, Singapore, those types of things. Yeah. We sometimes uh, limit um, the you know, we, we don't hire by office per se, just to be clear. Uh, we do want to get it right regionally, but we sometimes limit uh, open positions for particular offices and for mundane reasons, like we're out of space, space yeah. in that office. So if we're out of space in an office until we can expand that office, which could be six months or a year, or a year and a half later, we'll probably try and uh, shut that down for recruiting. That happens from time to time. Uh, one question around the Mexico City application timeline um, in terms of sending around a uh, application recently. That timeline usually takes a couple weeks, so I'd say expect to hear something uh, soon. Um, what markets besides your existing markets are the top uh, top of mind in order to expand? Wow. Um, I, I don't think I can say it's kind of, uh, it, we, we talk about a lot of markets all the time, both in terms of demand, but also where we think we can get talent. I don't really have anything to announce on new markets or next markets right now. Um, perfect. Two more quick questions. In the media practice, does Allman Solon work with any um, music-related companies? Um, I, uh, I'm sure the answer is yes. I'm trying to definitely in Europe. I certainly yeah. in Europe. Yep. Music rights. I know they've been doing music rights there. I believe. Uh, I believe we've done something on that in the US as well, but I can't recall right now. So, yes, I would say. Yeah. I'll say it. Um, and then a final question, which I'm going to boomerang to uh, a combination of Christina in New York, and then I'm going to make the full team answer here. Um, when uh, when you would have only one word to describe the work at Altman Solon, what would it be? Christina, kick us off. 
Oh, wow. So we put me on the spot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that's hard. I don't think I could give it one word. I think I could say two. Um, and sorry, I know that's cheating a little bit. But I'll say intellectual curiosity. I feel like every project that I'm on is so based in problem solving and solving unique client um, like problems that they're facing, things that they're trying to work out, and, and everything really revolves around brainstorming. So that, that would be my answer. Patrick? You go next. No, you're, we're starting on that side. I was reading the questions. We're starting on that side. Um, all right. I'll, uh, I'll say, um, I want to say uh, three words. I'm going to up you by one word. Uh, um, very high standards. Innovative. Exciting. And <laughs> thank you, whoever asked that question. Yeah, that's, I mean, a great, that's, a, that's a perfect that's question. Awesome to question. End on, uh, <laughs> never been asked before. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much to uh, everyone on the on the line who was able to join. Um, thanks uh, to to Naman and the rest of the management consultant uh, team that we're working with on this one. We're really excited about this opportunity, and uh, please certainly follow up with a combination of our team with Naman um, about if this is something that has piqued your curiosity and excited you. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, team at Almond Salon. Uh, guys, if you have any other questions about the open roles, uh, please feel free to write us. Um, the link to apply is in the chat. Uh, we're really excited to send some top resumes their way. Uh, and I hope that you agree after this session that this is an exciting place to begin or continue your consulting career. Uh, with that, we will close off the call. Thanks again, team, for joining us. And thanks, everybody, for taking an hour out of your day to hang out. Thanks, Amon. Take care, folks. Thank you.